So I thought I'd make a little video here about how to use the DAC0808 digital to analog converter. Uh, this chip works a lot differently than a lot of the uh, digital chips that you may be used to and it can be pretty confusing at first so I just thought I'd kind of walk you through some of the um, weird things it does. Um, just as a quick overview, uh, this is a current device, meaning it uses currents to achieve its end results, which is to obviously convert your digital information into a, you know, a voltage. However, it is going to take that digital information and it is going to turn your, you know, plus five volts that are showing up here on the digital inputs into currents. They are going to be summed via a, you know, resistor ladder kind of a device. Um, and we are going to generate a current uh, that will then be turned into a voltage using an op amp. The thing that is strange about this, and if you actually look at, for example, this is in the data sheet, the test circuit here, take a look at the way the arrows are flowing in, um, especially here. This is, this is your pin four, this is your output, right? Look at the way that, that arrow is pointing. Your current is going into the chip. Here, your V ref your ret references, both your negative and your positive references, both have currents flowing into them, right? So that is the thing that is probably the strangest about this chip, is that if you were to measure the actual voltage coming out of this, it would be negative uh, with reference to ground. Um, if you were to able be able to see how the currents were flowing. Current would be flowing into this chip, right? We need this op amp in the inverting format in order to get a positive voltage out of this. Now it turns out that that is going to be an advantage for us because it's going to allow us to scale uh, that current into whatever voltage we want. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's uh, let's back up and just sort of take this pin by pin. Uh, by the way, this uh, schematic that I've drawn up here is kind of just a cobbled together thing of, of stuff I found on the internet and kind of my own experiences. Um, and I'll put a link to it down in the comments section so you don't have to madly scribble it down here. Um, I tend to use and, and choose to use this and, and look at this device as a analog device. I, it lives in the analog world and therefore I want it to be between my analog rails which are a plus 15 and a minus 15. Again in your the typical application thing here in the um, where is it in the uh, data sheet they've got a plus 5 and a minus 15. That always struck me as a, a strange um, way of doing things and the the real pitfall as far as I'm concerned is that you're going to be so tempted to grab your plus 5 voltage from the same place that you are using uh, your microcontrollers or your digital chips um, and this is a real danger because um, these, you know, all, all your digital inform, all your digital equipment, your digital circuitry, it's it's, it's fairly noisy, you know, and um, has its own sort of like current demands, and you you really with, with the sensitivity of, of a lot of analog equipment and a lot of analog um, circuitry, you do not want to get those two things mixed up. You want your digital circuitry to be downstream of a seventy eight oh five voltage regulator and um, you know, uh, and your ground rail, and then you want your analog stuff to be downstream of a, in my case, 7815, 7915 bypassed voltage regulators. Um, 
that is just the, the the that is just the smart way to do things and the only time that these two things touch each other is with this digital bus this 8-bit bus that comes from whatever you're using in most cases a microcontroller of some kind uh, into the inputs of this DAC0808 um, so that is your power input and output I mean sorry uh, positive rail negative rail ground obviously goes to ground um, compensation just gonna go through 100 picofarad cap your negative reference well, is also going to go to ground in this case through a 3.3 K ohm resistor whatever this resistor is you want this resistor to be you want these two resistors to be the same uh, that just is going to leave us with two things our output and our positive voltage reference now voltage reference again is kind of a misnomer here because we're not so concerned about what voltage we're putting in here what we are concerned about is what current we are sending into here this is going to be the supply current that uh, is going to be divided up by this um, digital in, in information here we want at least two milliamps of current in here so the way that I have this rigged up is with a Zener diode it's very stable that's what you want you want a very stable voltage reference you can get separate voltage chips that do the same thing uh, this is just a, an easy way to do it uh, knowing that I have 12 volts here and a 3.3 K resistor here we can do quick math and figure out that we're going to have about three and a half milliamps of current coming into this chip um, so that is the thing that's going to be divided by the resistor I mean the the the, the 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 summing you know resistor ladder that's in here when this thing is down at digital zero we're gonna have a zero current when this thing is up full at its you know 8-bit maximum 255 uh, we will have whatever our max current was coming in here okay um, now you don't have to use the full 255 steps that are in here um, you can really use sort of any anything between 0 and 255 um, in your mind you want to have an idea of what your lowest number is and what your highest number is and what that's going to correspond to in terms of your voltage so let's just say for example we want to have you know we'll have a zero and then we'll also have as our highest number let's say digital I mean um, yeah digital 120 I'm sorry decimal 120 whatever that is in terms of hexadecimal I don't know but uh, 120 will be our input and then in terms of voltage what we want is 0 volts and 10 volts at the top all right so what we'll do is when this thing is at 0 this thing will be at 0 and when this thing will put it up full to 120 and then we'll just scale this is a 10k pot this so that when that is up at 120 this is reading at 10 volts all right using it in that scenario with 0 volts and 10 volts as your max you're just going to want to put your non-inverting side here to ground all right uh, let's say in my case for example you want to have a bipolar output you want to have let's say a plus 5 as your max and a minus 5 as your minimum in that case we need to use a voltage divider to create a reference that will go into our non-inverting side that will create a 5 volt input that's going to create an offset um, in this case I'm using uh, also a 5k pot in here just to sort of fine-tune the final little tweak so that that is exactly at 5 volts um, so we're again we're going to use this pot to scale the whole thing our entire range and then we'll use this pot to offset that exactly where we want it to be so that's pretty much it um, this is a great schematic to get started with I think uh, you could build this thing and using 
it as is, tweak it in whatever way you want to. So this is a great jumping off point to do whatever um, you ultimately want to do. Uh, I hope that helps. Um, I guess if you have any questions, throw them in the comments thing, and I'll see if I can get to them. But I've pretty much exhausted what I know about this chip. So uh, there you go. Take care.